Hi, Chef Payne. Hi, Chef Sam's. What are we doing? We're making cake. We're gonna ice this mocha mousse cake. Please pay particular attention because this is on your final exam. So we have been building components for a couple of days, haven't we? We made paper piping cornets. We have seized chocolate and piped our motifs. We have made mocha marzipan, or coffee marzipan, and we've made marzipan beans. We've made this beautiful Italian buttercream flavored with mocha. We used coffee, Kahlua liqueur, and some ganache. We have split our devil's bouquet. We have macerated it with a Kahlua maceration. We've put our chocolate mousse that we flavored with Kahlua in the center, and most importantly, it has rested overnight in the refrigerator. If I had taken my mousse from the freezer and put it in between my cake layers that were not frozen, the temperature difference would, would affect your buttercream as you're spreading it. So it would kind of seize on your mousse and evenly and easily apply to your cake since it's at a cooler temperature. So you wanna make sure that that is in the refrigerator the night before you plan on decorating your cake. I have a turntable here that freely moves and I put a piece of tape on the bottom so that I can get a nice grip on my cake. Okay. I have a gold board with a piece of tape on it already. Thank you to Chef Katie Payne. I have a bag with a number three star tip that I've already deposited some of that delicious mocha buttercream in. Here are our motifs our beans, and we're gonna shave some chocolate to put on top of it because this cake doesn't have enough chocolate. And then we're gonna put a little vermicelli border on the base of it. Oh, look at these vermicellis. So delicious. Also, notice I have gloves on because this is a ready-to-eat product. So, um, additionally, I, I'm kind of weird and y'all gonna get to know that pretty quickly. But I like to put a piece of parchment down because I kind of like to outline my um, icing area. I don't want to get too far out of it. Um, it helps me to stay organized and I will look for that kind of organization when you all are working in lab. I also have uh, a container that has some hot water in it. I have a palette knife and I have a bench knife or scraper. So I'm going to start by applying some frosting to this cake. So there are many ways to apply frosting. Some people like to start with the side and work up. I'm gonna put a lot of icing on the top and work down. Um, for different cakes, I apply it differently, but this frosting works really well this way. It's a nice, firm frosting, and I can just move it easily with my palette knife. So. I am just pushing the frosting over the edge. And what I'm going for is about a quarter of an inch of frosting on the top and on the sides. Sometimes students put so much frosting on it, it's just kind of overkill. And um, recently had somebody tell me that they didn't love a lot of frosting. So that's our goal. So as you can see, I'm just pushing, I'm using my palette knife to push this icing down. So now that I've got some over the edge, and see how it's not falling, it's just perfect. Chef Payne, you did a beautiful job on this icing. Mm. Uh, I should say frosting, right? So see how I'm just grabbing it and pushing it. So in baking one, when you first started icing and decorating cakes, your instructor may have told you that there's two correct ways to hold a palette knife. You hold it in your hand like you would a chef's knife, right? Um, and then either hold it perpendicular to the turntable or parallel or um, horizontal. So if you are holding it in any other angle, you're gonna get like a side that comes out like this or you, know, you get a mad hat or uh, shape. So you wanna be careful with um, the angle of your cake. So I know we talked about um, crumb coats and you could easily ap apply a crumb coat that would be no problem. But I was hoping to have gotten enough icing on the top and pushed down the side to not have to apply a crumb coat. I'm sneaky that way. I'm very sneaky. Some say lazy, I say sneaky. So the crumb coat, its main purpose, of course, is to 
cover tray, the crumbs. So I'm going to take um, this excess and scrape it off into my container. Give myself a little bit of a clean swipe there. And I'm going to come back at some of this top frosting and get it around the sides because I'm a little skinny on some of those sides, as you all might have been able to tell. Okay, so once I get the cake covered, I start looking at the shape. So I want to see straight sides and a level top and um, nice crisp corners. So we're gonna get to that just really quickly here. So I'm covered. I'm going to gently drag my palette knife over these high ridges that are built when you come around the sides of your cake. And I've just got my palette knife at a very slight angle and I'm just coming straight over. Okay. So I'm going to just take a look if I need extra icing. You always want to make sure that your that your turntable moves smoothly because if it hooks up on you or hitches you'll get that sort of jaggedness roughness to your sides and you might be thinking that there's looks like there's a whole lot of air cells in this icing but we'll get those out i mean we've obviously beaten this icing but we'll get those air cells out and make this nice and smooth so i am just finishing up ensuring that i have this cake well covered not too much icing before I start shaping it up. So start from the top, push down the side, get around all the way around evenly, and then I just am starting now to work on my shape. Uh, sometimes you'll see people ice cakes and hunker down, and they're just trying to get a good look of um, if they're even on the top. I have a real low spot right here. And some people would want to apply icing on the top there, but I like to apply it to the side like this so that I can push it where I want it instead of press down the icing and distort the level. Okay, so I've got the icing applied as I want it. And now I'm gonna start just working on my shape. So I'm gonna take my bench knife and I'm gonna just warm it, and I'm gonna place it on the side of my cake, and in one turn, I wanna get around my cake. So I've got one spot where I've taken, you know, started and stopped. So that's just my first swipe at it. That's just starting to shape up my sides, and I'm gonna come back at it again. And then I'm gonna work on my top, okay? And if I have spots that I've missed, I'm going to come back around and reapply this, this uh, bench knife to it. I also want to make sure I've got straight sides, straight up and down. And I've just got one little area right here I'm not super happy with. So I'm going to come at that and I'm just putting a little pressure on my pointy finger so I can get that corrected. And then I'm going to take my palette knife once more, get him nice and clean, and I'm going to work on the top. Okay. So I'm just going to do that same approach, come at it, come at it. Chef Payne, can you get a good, I do it from this direction? Come at it, just very, very acute angle. So I can get my top nice and smooth with this buttercream. Now if the buttercream's wompy or broken, it's a little bit trickier, but we did a great job on this buttercream, if I say so myself. Um, all right, so I have left a slight little edge over here that I wanna correct, because I'm a little OCD. And I'm gonna go on and decorate this guy. What do you think, Chef Payne? Well, Shall we do it? Yes. Okay, I've got one minute. All right, so I am putting my palette knife in between the cake and the turntable and I'm twisting so that I can get 
underneath this cake, right? So I can decorate it. I'm also gonna take a second to clean up this guy. All right, so what I want to do is I wanna first put my uh, vermicelli on the bottom. I also kinda wanna clean up any issues I might have here. Okay, so I have my vermicelli. I want one eighth inch border of vermicelli. So that just means I am barely tapping the cake and I'm turning it in my hand, just balancing this guy. Okay. Um, you want to be careful with this. You don't want to turn your hand up over to the side of the cake or you'll cover it. So my hand is level and I'm just bringing it up to the cake. I'm not turning it over because we want this to just be a, a very nice, gentle um, disguise there. So, um, that, and that's the purpose of a mask, masking the base of the cake where the um, cardboard circle would be. So to get it onto my gold board, I'm gonna replace my hand with my palette knife. I'm gonna bring it down to the gold board, remove my hand, and then I'm just gonna Gently pull that guy out. Okay, so now I'm gonna put him on back on top here. And we're gonna get a couple things out of our way. How's it looking, Chef? It looks great. Awesome, okay. So, I'm gonna put it back up here so I can get to it. I'm gonna put 12 rosettes on this guy. 12 rosettes, and you all may remember that a rosette is simply, um, it looks like a circle or a little bird's nest, but doesn't have a hole in the center like a bird's nest. I'm holding my piping tip straight up and down, perpendicular to the surface, pressing in a circle, stopping, pulling off in the direction in which I'm piping. So straight up and down, pull off in the direction in which I'm piping. So I'm gonna do it like the hands of a clock, or the numbers on a clock always piping at six o'clock right in front of myself. So now that's 12, I need to pipe another, that's my six, and then I need to pipe. You wanna make sure that your tip is clean so you can get a nice rosette. And I'm holding my tip a little bit above my cake so I can get a nice, you know, pretty voluptuous rosette. And they're at the edge, but they're not hanging off. So now I need to get two rosettes in between each one of these. Add a little air bubble there. So when you place these correctly, they bring the guest's eye out to the edge. If you bring them in too closely, it just sort of shrinks the surface there. Okay, two more. And then, I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with this one. Let me move him. So I just had that too close to each other and I just, that's not acceptable. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to start my garnish. Uh, I'm going to place my little coffee beans right where I have pulled off from my rosette. So I'm disguising that area of my rosette where I pulled off. I, I go back and forth. Sometimes I pipe clockwise, sometimes I pipe counterclockwise. So as long as you are consistent, your, the tail will be in the same place. So, all right, and we've made some extras just in case we drop any or they roll onto the floor, or if you just wanna taste them. And then I'm gonna take my motifs and I'm gonna place them behind our coffee beans. And I've got them at a slight angle. I sort of like, it gives it a little movement. And we piped these by seizing 
some Semper chocolate, and we used our paper cornets to pipe with, and it worked out beautifully. And some of them are, you know, a little different than the others, but as long as they're general shape, using the template, it really is, it's hard to distinguish that. So after I finish putting my motifs on, I'm gonna shave a little chocolate and it's gonna go right in the center of this cake. So this is a delicious cake and your families um, will love it. It's one of everybody's favorite cakes, if you're a chocolate person. So, so to shave some chocolate, I've got a big bar of Semper chocolate, the same chocolate we used for the motifs, and I'm gonna hold it against myself, and I'm protecting my uniform by placing a cardboard circle in between myself and the chocolate bar. So, and I'm rubbing the chocolate bar to warm it up a little bit. If the chocolate's cold, you'll get these real small little crummy things, and we want, you know, we wanna try and get some ribbons or some rolls. So I'm just gonna hold my chef's knife and I'm just gonna pull towards myself. And when it's warm, you can get it to sort of roll like this. And when it stops rolling, just give it another rub, okay? And we're gonna do just enough to fill the center. So if you're worried about your top having a little imperfection, we're gonna cover most of it. So see the difference between this and these little pieces over here? So what we're going for are these nice, beautiful pieces. I'm gonna pick it up sort of like the claw machine at the video arcade where you get to pick up toys. And then I'm just gonna drop it in the center. And if you want more chocolate, you shave more chocolate. But if you don't, that's gonna do it for you. And we're gonna put this on a clean table for Chef Payne to get a nice shot of. And there is your mocha mousse cake.